<laughs> it's great to see all of you this morning. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together, and I'll lead the prayers at the end of the lesson. I just want to inquire, and, and we have people at the back who have the emblems, little packages of the emblems that we'll partake of. If you did not get one of these on your way in, would you raise your hand, please, so that we can, we can get these to you? While they're doing that, I just, uh, the, the second shortest verse that I know of in the Bible is Colossians 3.15. Do you know what that says? It says, and be thankful. And be thankful. So I'm going to be thankful for a couple of things. I want to thank the, uh, the brothers who have been here, who have delivered messages to us over the last several months. Uh, I don't know of any church, of course, I don't know of all the churches, but I don't know of any church anywhere that has as many talented men that can get up and bring a lesson as good as you can hear. And the elders today made an exception and brought me forward. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to focus on the Lord's Supper this morning. But before we do that, I want to say also that I appreciate, on a personal note, I appreciate the prayers and concern for my welfare over the last month. Uh... The ticker problem is pretty much under control with a little pill that's about this big. So, doing fine. Thank you for your concern and thank you for your prayers. Does everyone in here know what blood kin means? You, you got a head with a neck, so you're going to have to give me this or give me this, one or the other. Does everyone in here know what blood kin means? It must be a southern term. Of course, I was from the Midwest and we didn't talk much about blood kin. But my lovely and wonderful wife, now I'm making some points here. My lovely and wonderful wife had two brothers and a father-in-law that I've hunted with for some 30-something years. It didn't make any difference what I did, whether good or bad, or no matter what I did. They would always say and remind each other in a heckling fashion towards me, you have to remember that he's not blood kin. It didn't make any difference what I did. You have to remember that he's not blood kin. Until on the 157th time that they said that to me, I retorted, gentlemen, it is a distinct pleasure of mine to know that I am not your blood kin. <laughs> and it stopped from that point forward for some reason. Well, blood kin has to do with a bloodline. Being a part of a family and you're part of the downstream bloodline. I want us to know this morning, brothers and sisters, that everyone who are gathered here this morning, you have a bloodline. But it's not the familial, familial type that we normally think of. We who sit in this assembly and Christians that are all over the world today are part of a bloodline imparted by the giving of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're going to read some, some things about that bloodline here in our service from Scripture. And we're also going to partake of a meal here in a little bit together, a fellowship meal. Now, I don't know how customary it is in this day and time for families <laughs> to sit at dinner and to have a meal together, but I can remember as a, growing up as a child and up through the teenage years how valuable and meaningful it was to be able to sit with parents and have a meal, an evening meal, and everything that went on during that evening meal. Do you, do you remember that? Do, do you all still do that? sit down for an evening meal or have a meal together and discuss things and reminisce and teach maybe in certain instances share but you're also sharing nourishment and training and a lot of different things go on whenever you have that fellowship meal together 
Well, you know what, brothers and sisters? There's a lot of that same thing that goes on in this fellowship meal that we're going to partake of here in just a little bit, except it's in the spiritual realm of things. And the reason for this lesson is, is heaven forbid that we turn this Lord's Supper into something that is commonplace, something that is mundane, something that we just do. I heard a preacher that came to our visit, our assembly, many years ago and said, well, it's going to be interesting today because I've come to see how you do church. Well, that could be taken in one way, but to me, that makes the assembly of God's people, it makes it so commonplace to see how we do church. It means much more than that, does it not, brothers and sisters? Well, they give me a clicker and I forgot to get it out, so bear with me here. And I understand that I can actually blow up these things with this thing, so I've got to be careful with this. Can you see these okay on the screen? Call this mealtime for blood kin. Here's what objectively qualifies a person to be involved here. Read along with me. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Listen now. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Brothers and sisters, if you were born of the water and of the Spirit, I will tell you today, that you are in a special place and you are a special person. You are Abraham's heir and you belong to Christ. Now, let's get to the bloodline here. Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. Therefore, Paul writing to the Ephesian church, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near, how? By the blood of Christ. So, by the blood of Christ, we're kin. We are in Christ. We are part of a brotherhood. We are bonded. We are family. We share together. We have hope. We have aspirations. Do we not? And we celebrate that today as we partake of this Lord's Supper. So some considerations. I just got several considerations. I don't have many slides here. This isn't going to be one of those marathon PowerPoint things. So I just got a few slides here. So some considerations. This was our scripture reading that we had earlier on. And if you noted, and I'm not going to take the time to read this again, and everyone is very familiar with this scripture out of Acts, but this Lord's Supper that we're going to partake in, brothers and sisters, is relationship-oriented. It is about our relationship with God and with, his, and with His Son and with the Holy Spirit. And it is about our relationship with each other in the church. And I want to ask you, that's what you see here in this scripture in Acts 2. When those, after that day of Pentecost, on that day of Pentecost, when these Christians were together, if you look at all of these items that are up here, these people were united. They were bonded. They were sharing. They were doing everything they could possibly do because the joy that was within them was uncontrollable. They met together every day in the temple courts. They shared bread. They shared their property. They did all of these things because they were excited about being a Christian. They had unity. I'm going to ask you to do something right now that is almost verboten in our services, and that is I want you to take a look around. I want you to take a look around. 
I want you to look at your brothers and sisters. Turn around and look. Be an embarrassment to them. They're not going to like it. <laughs> See, it's really uncomfortable to turn around and take a look at all of these, all of these brothers and sisters who are sitting here. Some of you aren't looking. <laughs> are you ashamed of your brothers and sisters? You know, we are taught, and the scripture teaches us about it's important that during this Lord's Supper that we examine oneself. True? That we are to examine one ourselves. But sometimes I think we are so internalized that we forget, we forget that we are here with all of our brothers and sisters and we follow the same bloodline and we are family and we need to be aware that we're doing things and stating things to each other to support each other. Are you aware of that? I just think that sometimes we're so internalized that we forget that we're meeting here as the body of Christ together. Okay, guys, where do I point this thing so it works? There we go. Here's another consideration. The Lord's Supper is a ritual. Now that puts, a, that puts sometimes a bitter taste in our mouths when we talk about it being a ritual. It is a God-ordained ritual put into effect by the Son of God. It is a ritual. And we read these verses out of 1 Corinthians 11 fairly often. Look on the screen, we'll read them together right quick. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said... This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. All of us know those scriptures, I think. Do we not? Here is a danger, not in what Christ ordained and put into effect. The danger is that human beings... Have a, have a practice of really messing up rituals. Do you know that? Because the motivations and the things that are supposed to be concentrated upon are somehow get lost in the shuffle of the mundane or, the, or how we practice. So we have to be on our guard not to make it mundane and make it such a thing of practice that the ritual becomes more important than the purpose it is serving. Does that make sense to you? In other words, we have to be tied in to what it's really all about and not just about the ritual and the practice of doing it, although that's a part of it. You know, in that ritualized way that people can do things, we can lose the attitude of gratitude that should be intrinsic to what that, this is all about as far as the supper is concerned if we don't stay focused if we don't stay focused and devoted to what we're supposed to be doing, and that is participating in the supper of our Lord. It is really important. It is important. We talk about in our society and in the world for a long time, we've talked about this thing called soul food. This is soul food, brothers and sisters, when we partake of the supper. This is food for the soul. Not of the material type. It's soul food if we do it the way it's supposed to be done. Do you know as a consideration that when we partake of the Lord's Supper that this is a rite of reaffirmation? Do you know that? You're reaffirming your faith. I don't know, and maybe you want to make a prediction about how many Lord's Suppers that you have left. We don't know that, do we? But this is a rite of reaffirmation. It says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26, the verse following, eleven twenty four and 25, of course, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we partake of the emblems of Christ's body and blood, who are we proclaiming to? If this is true that we are proclaiming, that we are testifying, who are we testifying to in this Lord's Supper? Well, I would suggest to the Lord, to the Lord, 
We are testifying, proclaiming our faith in the Lord. Do you remember the verse in Matthew 18, 20, what it said? Here's the seriousness of the matter. Young folks, listen up. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. When we take, partake of this Lord's Supper, guess who's here with us? The Lord is. And you are testifying to him. Or not, depending upon your attitude and actions. We're testifying, and the reason I went through that little embarrassing exercise of having everybody look at each other just a minute ago, when you partake of these emblems, you are also testifying to everyone that's here. You're testifying to your brothers and sisters that you believe. This is my faith. This is what I'm testifying to you by partaking of these emblems. And you know who else you're testifying to? Yourself. You're testifying to yourself. I believe this. I believe this. I believe. This is kind of a strange one. I bet, I don't think you probably, maybe not have ever thought about this before, but do you know that our partaking of the Lord's Supper together is a rehearsal? Matthew 26, 29, Jesus said, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. How many of you plan on going to heaven? You better put your hand up. <laughs> this doesn't make sense until you go over to Revelation 19, 7 through 10 and you read what it says there. Have any of you ever been to a rehearsal dinner before a wedding? We rehearse. And I suspect that in whatever form that we are in, if we are privileged enough to go to heaven, that whenever we see what happens at that rehearsal, and it potentially could have some of these emblems and a form of a supper that's taking place there at that rehearsal dinner, if it's going to be able to get everybody to sit down, and if we even are able to sit down, I'm not sure what we will be able to do. Look at Revelation 19, 7 through 10. Then I heard, this is a scene from heaven. It says, then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. Look. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. You know who that bride is? Those are the people that make up the church who were bought with his blood and his, their robes were washed in that blood. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. The church, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the what? Wedding supper of the Lamb. These are the true words of God. I bet there will be some chins hitting the floor whenever we actually see what's going to go on at that great supper, brothers and sisters. Oops. So... The Lord's Supper, and we don't have time, some other time we'll take up all of these terms. But as, as you're partaking this morning, I know you can't recall all of these, but just think through with me here for just a second. The Lord's Supper is involving faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, For we're sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see, right? The Lord's Supper is about faith. It's about a part of our worship service. It's involving fellowship, what they called koinonia in the Greek back in the day. A sharing of material things as well as spiritual things. It is a commemoration. It is devotion. We are devoted to doing it on a regular schedule. We're devoted to the ritual on a reg regular schedule because Jesus told us to do it as often as we would, right? It is obedience. It is introspection. We're looking at ourselves and we're measuring up 
are we really doing what the Lord wants us to do? It is dedication. And perhaps if we are in the Spirit and we are really into what the Lord's Supper means, perhaps it is giving us some revelation as we do these things as well. It's revealing to us the price that was paid for our salvation. And it also helps us with resolution. Resolving that when we go forth in this place that we will live as the Lord wants us to during the week. And of course, it is about remembrance. So just a few facts here about remembrance before we close out. The word remember is recorded on average across the Bible versions 160 times. Memorials and remembrances throughout God's Word are so prevalent and pervasive that it is apparent that such are God-ordained service for believers. Our mechanism called memory serves us as a pres preservation device for realities and principles that are eternally or should be eternally important to us. And it's a construct. Now I know I'm, there's lots of big words here, but hang with me. It's a construct of our frame of reference. It tells us about what has been built into us as far as our attitudes, our motivations, and our actions. That's why Bible da daily Bible reading and being in the Word influences us so much is because it's impacting our frame of reference. Memory has a direct influence on our degree of faithfulness to the Lord. Do you know that? What we can bring to mind in our memory, it has some impact on our faithfulness, our degree of faithfulness. Forgetting, forgetting, do any of you ever forget? Unfortunately, some of us are starting to forget more and more as time goes along. Forgetting, on the other hand, intentional or unintentional, is attributed to a lack of reinforcement information, repetition. That's where partaking of the Lord's Supper, the repetition becomes important for us. But forgetting also involves displacement where other prioritized info takes precedent over other stored memories. That's why when all of these other things, and you'll hear men that get up here and ask that, you know, we kind of clear our minds and get in a meditative mode so that the iPhone is out of our life and the iPad is out for a while and what we're going to do at school this week and what we're going to do at work this week kind of leaves and we leave this moment of meditation and this moment of partaking in this fellowship meal as something that is unbelievably important to us and impacts our life. Forgetting has a direct influence on our degree of faithfulness to the Lord. Forgetting has a direct influence on our degree of faithfulness to the Lord. Last slide, folks. Paul wrote to the young preacher Timothy in 2 Timothy in these verses. And the last writing of Paul, he was doing what Peter did in his last letter. He was writing things that he felt were most important for his people, for his followers to know. And he said this to Timothy, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. Here is a trustworthy saying. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, if we died with him, if we died with him in the waters of baptism, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Keep reminding God's people about these things. That's what we've tried to do here this morning.